Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and this is another part of the series on using your Cricut. Today we are going to work with a graphic and add an offset, actually print, then cut it using the Cricut. It's taken me a while to find a way to do this for people who do not have Photoshop or graphics editing software available, and also there is a way to do this within Cricut, but it is very tedious. And even though the way I'm going to show you has a few steps involved, the steps are simple steps. The process to do it with Cricut is not as simple. The design space is not really space for designing. So most people that create stickers and die cuts and things like that, graphics that they intend to cut with their Cricut, do not create those in Cricut. They create it outside of Cricut in programs like Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Procreate, things like that. Okay, so if you don't have any of that, it kind of makes it difficult. I searched um, through several free graphic editing softwares and I was not happy with the results or the process to do what needed to be done. So this is what I came up with instead. Silhouette Studio offers a basic version of their software for free. You can go to a Silhouette, I think it's Silhouette America, and download the free version. I'm working in the business edition now, but I have tested this on another computer with the basic version of Silhouette, and you can do from there what you need to do. If you have some type of PDF printer, on your computer, and most computers come with this now either through Adobe or Microsoft, then you can do what I'm about to do. If you don't have the PDF printer available on your system, there are options available online. So let's get started. So to do what I'm about to do, if you don't have any other graphics editing software, you will need to download the basic version of Silhouette Studio. You'll need to open the software and then simply go to file and open the graphic that you would like to work with. I'm going to be working with a graphic that is available to my patrons over on Patreon. So they were able to get all of these colors of this bow that I illustrated. So this is what it looks like. It's open in Silhouette Studio. Now I can I need to go in here and remove the background even though this is transparent it still has a box around the bow it's not the bow shape so let's make it the bow shape so I go over here and open the trace panel so once the trace panel is open you want to select trace area so I'm going to just select the whole bow doesn't matter if it's exact. So I've demonstrated this in other Silhouette Studio tutorials, but I'm going to show here because this is a Cricut tutorial, even though we're working in Silhouette. So what we want to do is cover this bow in yellow. And to do that, I'm going to increase the threshold because everywhere that you see yellow is going to be traced. So I increased the threshold pretty high. I took it all the way to 100%. So what we want to do now is trace and detach. What that's going to do is trace around everywhere that you see yellow and detach the yellow shape from the background. So that's what we want to do, trace and detach. OK, so now I should be able to click outside of my bow. And it'll highlight the box that it took away. See here, there's nothing there. It took away that background. So we can now get rid of this. This is just empty space. We don't need it. When we go over here to send, even though we're not hooked up to a silhouette machine, you should see a red line around it. If you were cutting with a silhouette, then everywhere that you see the red, it would cut that out. We could also make it cut out these spaces on the inside here. But we're not going to deal with that right now. Uh, we're going to keep this simple. So let's go ahead and click on the very edge of that bow. Even though we can't see that there's a line around, let's zoom in. 
So you can't really, you can't see that there's a cut line around this without going to the send option, but there is. So if we click right on the edge of our graphic and right click on it, you click offset, it's going to offset. It's going to give us a line around the graphic. You see there? Now you can go over here to the offset panel, which will open automatically when you do when you click offset and adjust the amount of offset. Usually what I do if I leave the graphic full size and it's a pretty big graphic like this, I leave the offset at 0.125. You can reduce it down to 0 0.0625 or 0 0.06. Anything you want, you can increase it. Let's see. Let's so I made it even smaller. You can make it bigger, however you choose to do it. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at the 0.125. Since we are using it for Cricut, I'm going to go ahead and fill that with white, and I'm going to remove the red line. So you're not going to be able to see the red line, but it's there. This is editing me. I wanted to pop in because I forgot to tell you that you should actually group the bow or your graphic with your offset. And to do that, you would select both items, go to object in the menu up above and click object, then group so that both items are together. And if you don't accidentally move anything and get them out of line. So back to the tutorial. So we have created our offset. I'm going to drag the bow off of the canvas so that you can see that there is an offset. Now we can use this as a die cut or we can use it as stickers. So if I want to keep it this size as a die cut, then I need to put a background behind it. And I'm just going to draw a square. And I'm going to change the stroke to none, this, which was the red line around it. And it's red in this box here. And then I'm going to fill it with a light gray color. And I'm going to object, arrange, send to back. I made a gray rectangle, sent it to the back. And this is what we have. So I'm just going to save this. OK, I just saved it as a studio file. With the basic version of Silhouette, if you do save as to and save to hard drive, you won't have options of the types of files you can save it as. So I have the business edition. In, ba in the basic edition, you only have this option here to save as a Silhouette Studio file. And there's really not much you can do with that outside of Silhouette. And we need to work with this in Cricut. So in order to do that, I go to File print then in the print dialog box i choose adobe pdf or yours may say microsoft pdf or you may be using some other type of pdf software um, but i'm using adobe pdf and so i'm going to choose that and click print what that's going to do instead of actually printing it on paper it's going to print as a pdf or save our document as a pdf so i'm going to replace what i already had there and save it and so now it's converting or printing as a pdf and this is opened up in adobe acrobat so this is what we have so now we need to convert this pdf into a ping if you're on a mac when you go to print the file i think it gives you the option to go ahead and save it as a ping when you click the print, but I'm not on a Mac, so, or Apple computer. Okay, and from there, I'm, I just went to Google and Google convert PDF to ping. There are several services out there. Um, some of them have some limitations. You can choose whichever one you want. This one is pdfpro.co. Um, there are several, so I'm going to try this one. I haven't used this one before, but let's see how it works. So I'm just going to go and upload my PDF. And there's probably some software also that you can download to your computer that does this. Really, I could just open the PDF in Adobe Photoshop and convert it, but I'm trying to show you ways that you can do this if you don't have that software. Here it is. It gives me the 
original file and the PDF. Okay, so I just want to download. I'm replacing another test that I did earlier. And if this is something that you will be doing often, I would suggest searching and finding a software that is capable of converting a PDF to a ping on your computer instead of having to use a, a free internet service. Okay, so now we're gonna go to Cricut. I've already opened Cricut Design Space. I go, I'm going to go to a new project, which we have a blank canvas here, and I'm gonna upload my bow test. So I'm looking for the ping. This is it, PNG file. Oh, there it is. So now we're going to choose complex and go to continue. And then we're going to do advanced options. I'm going to bring it down some of uh, the color tolerance down to, let's say, 12. And let's see. I want to erase all of the gray. And I want to get rid of this white border around here, too. So that's gone. Now let's click continue. This gray with the black line around it shows how your graphic will cut. So we don't have anything outside of our shape that's going to cut. So we are good. We're going to save as print then cut. Yes. You go over here, give it a name at your tag so that you can easily search for it later and hit save. So now our graphic is down here in our recently uploaded images. We're going to select it and insert image. So now if you wanted this to be a specific size, let's see, what size was it when it was in silhouette? Yeah, it's like six by seven in silhouette. So when I imported it into Cricut, it did reduce the size some, but I'm gonna leave it at the size that Cricut reduced it to. And let's duplicate that. I'm gonna make a copy of this and see how many I can get to fit on one sheet. So I'm gonna select it and then go over here and hit duplicate, or you could just do control C, control V, which is faster. And let's see if we can get four on the canvas. I may make them a little smaller just so that I can fit all of them on here. Let's see, is that bigger than what Cricut allows? So keep in mind that when you print on, print and then cut on letter size paper or sticker paper, you are limited to 6.75 inches by 9.25 inches. So this is too big. Let's make it a little smaller. I'm going to group them so that when I select all of them and I don't want to weld, I want to group. Here we go. So let's make it a little smaller. This is much smaller. But if you look, it gives you the measurements across the top and the side, so you can kind of get a good feel for where you are. Now, let's go ahead and make this. It's still too big. Let me go back. Let's cancel. Because it's trying to put it on two pieces of paper, and I don't want it on two pieces of paper. I want it all on one. So let's make it a little smaller. I don't know why it's trying to do that. Now let's hit make it again. There we go. Now we're all on one piece of paper. Okay, so I'm going to send to printer, select the right printer that I wanna to print to. Let's do this one. And I'm just gonna print this on cardstock. I'm gonna leave these as is and just hit print. So this is what it looks like once it's printed. Uh, off of my printer and I'm going to put it on the cut mat and put it into the Cricut. This is the cardstock with the printed bows and the registration line 
that Cricut prints around them on the mat. You put it in the top left corner and line it up as evenly as you can with the, the margin line. So that's how it should look. Now I'm gonna load it into the machine. Okay, my mat's not very sticky, it's getting kind of old. Okay, so that's in. Now I'm gonna go back to the computer. So I had lost the Bluetooth connection. So um, even though it's saying send to print, I've already printed. So I'm just gonna click, I've already printed. Then I'm gonna choose what type of paper I'm using and I'm gonna say cardstock. The pressure, I'm gonna leave the, hmm. I'm gonna leave it default. Hopefully it will cut through. Uh, tools and materials loaded, yes. Loaded fine point blade. Press the flashing go button. So let's go do that and it will start cutting. So it's lined itself up and now it's gonna start cutting the bows. So hopefully everything came out the way it should. Yes, it did. So I'm just gonna unload <laughs> and peel away the excess that can go in the recycle bin. And we have our four bowls. So just peel them up off the mat. There you go. That's how you can create an offset in Cricut. So now that we're done, I can just hit finish. So if you want to save this, then you would save and then give it a name so that if you want to come back and print and cut it again, you can. I'm going to do cloud and computer just to be on the safe side. And that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little gray bell so that you'll receive notification each time I upload a new video. Be sure to check the community tab and my stories for updates throughout the week. Also, check us out over at patreon.com slash scrapcraftastic, especially if you're interested in these bows. The digital file is available there. Visit my other channel, Journal Life's Journey for live craft videos, junk journals, and weekly vlogs. You can find me across social media at ScrapCraftastic. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.